Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. Good so, evening. hi there. Um, here we are again, and I gotta tell you that tonight I am happier than regular because I just got an amazing news. And uh, as really? you guys, yeah, as you guys already know, I'm from San Miguel, and uh, I am a huge Aguila fan. And <laughs> Aguila just won a, a match that was like an international match, so that's great. You know, I wasn't able to watch the match, but. I was able to hear it because my dad is watching it over there on the living room. And I was uh -huh. hearing that they started yelling goal at the last minute. So yeah, that's that's something amazing. So tonight okay. we are up for uh for a treat, as they say in English. Being up for a treat. Do you guys know that phrase? Being <laughs> up for a treat. ¿Saben qué significa eso? No. No? Okay, so being up for a treat or getting ready for a treat, it means that um, you're about to start something great, something um, that is going to be enjoyable, basically. That's what it means. Being up for a treat, it means that you're going to do something that you consider to be enjoyable. So it is the last um, class of this week. I was expecting this class because I also didn't want it to rain or I didn't want it to get ruined because of the electricity. As um, <clears throat> tomorrow we have the um, like the the communal festivities here in my in my town, and of course there's going to be party, and I want to go with my sisters. And if there was a rain or something, I wasn't going to be able to go, and I will be able to go. So that's great. Um, okay, thank you for letting me know, Imelda. So, uh, yeah, and. The, the, the other thing is that tonight we are going to be talking about two topics that are very important and also very interesting. Um, actually, three topics, because you guys saw a sneak peek yesterday, which was uh, mentioned in the present perfect and the simple past. And we also have the present perfect, but in the continuous version. So those are going to be the three main structures or three main tenses that we're going to be looking at. They are not that hard to learn. I remember when I was in grammar lessons, I used to be, uh, I used to get headaches from them. But then I realized that they're not really that hard. Only you need to understand when you need to use them. So that's like the, the main thing. Now, another thing that is amazing is that tonight we're going to get presentations from Lorena and from Leslie. So um, did you guys get the slides ready? ¿Tienen listas las diapos y todo? Oh, cartel. Yeah. <laughs> cartel. No, yes. <laughs> just no, just the speech. <laughs> yo, yo aquí estoy haciendo lo ahorita, dijo Lely. <laughs> but I'm okay. ready. <laughs> okay, so um, who would like to start? Can I? Sure. All right. Okay. Go ahead then. Good night, everyone. And this opportunity, I'm going to talk about the benefits of doing Pilates. So, um, if you're looking for a fun and effective exercise, this is for you. But first, what is Pilates? Pilates um, is a type of exercise that focuses on improving flexibility, strength, and body awareness through control movement and was created in 1920s by German physical trainer Joseph Pilates for rehabilitation purpose. His method was influenced by other forms of exercise, including gymnastics and boxing. So, uh, according to the history, dancers and soldiers returning from war were among the first people to benefit from this practice. But what are the benefits of doing Pilates? I have four. And first one, Improve flexibility. Two, increase muscle, stretch, and tone, and particularly of your mm, abdominal muscle. Lower back, hips, and buttocks, that is the core muscles of your body. Three, balance muscular stretch of both sides of your body. And four, enhance muscular control of your back and limbs. And the best at all. You don't need any equipment. Just you and your mat. 
your mat is like a rope mm -hmm. or alfombra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can look up routines on YouTube or TikTok as me <laughs> and enjoy that amazing work. Trust on me, you won't regret. And that's all. All right, great, a very good job. That was nice, nice, Thank nice. You. So I did. It was interesting for me to know that um, Pilates actually, you know, he was uh, uh, a physician. So that's nice. Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, the the, the name of the um, what the workout comes from a person. I thought it was something like Greek because many things you know have their name based on on Greek stuff. So I thought it was something like it had to do with, with something Greek. Uh, but yeah, it's nice. And from 1920. Yeah. So it's, it has been a, around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I do it Pilates uh, five days a week since eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. <laughs> and, <laughs> really but, hard. <laughs> do you feel the benefits? Yeah. All right. That's the important part. You know, as far as you, you know, you start seeing the benefits from, um, from working out. So <clears throat> that's great. And, I actually something that I remember it was a misconception of mine is that I used to believe that Pilates was uh more like yoga, like you know, more like concentrating and relaxing and stuff. But then I saw that my sister started doing Pilates. She only did it for a week because she said it was too hard. Uh, but the thing is that uh, yeah, the thing is that it was I I, I when I was I mean. I don't know if you guys, if I ever have ever told you this, but I normally teach these classes in my kitchen and right in front of me, there is a window and in front of that window, there is like a patio and uh, in that patio, there's where my sister normally works out or my two sisters. Uh, sometimes it's my bigger sister, my older sister. But the thing is that I remember that I used to look at her through the window and she was sweating and like almost crying sometimes. And I was like, it doesn't look that hard. But then she started telling me that it was actually hard and it was like draining her strength. And and and, and uh, um, yeah, now she normally just does yoga because she does have a mat. Um, I got mats, matching mats for her and my, for my and for my girlfriend. So, yeah, the thing is that it seems to be very intense. Um, and I don't know, I would like to give it a try, you know, because, yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get shabby. I ha it has been like a month since I last went to the gym. So since the accident, I think you guys remember the accident. Yeah. So since, yeah. Since then, since then is that I haven't really been to the gym. So I start to feel like more shabby. So I need to, to do some kind of workout, but great. That was great information. Thank you very much, Leslie. Okay. How about uh, um, you, Lorena? Can we please okay. get to hear from you? Okay. How to help blind people or blind person? Mm -hmm. You may have wanted to help a blind person, but hesitate to, to feel an aggressive response or, or simply to avoid making a mistake. Here are some recommendations for getting to know them and being helpful. One, when entering a place where a blind person is present, even a single word or greeting is essential. Make them aware of your presence and also alert them if you're going to leave because they are, maybe they will continue talking to you and you're not there. And number two, never address them through another person. If you can ask him or her directly, like uh, in restaurants or in some places, they ask me when I'm, I am with my husband, hey, what is he going to eat? Or what does he want to drink? And they, he, he, asks, he, he tell them, hey, why don't you ask to me? Mm -hmm. I can hear you because it is like like a, they they have their all sense the other sense uh, working no mm -hmm. number three when encountering a blind person ask if they would like company or help but don't insist if they say that they don't need it it's okay because uh, sometimes they can manage by their own and that means that they don't need assistance number four if you are going to accompany them speak to them as you would to anyone else just uh, tell them your name and be like a uh, nice but like uh, with another person no don't be afraid don't talk louder or don't be like uh, shy 
because sometimes they are shy because uh, they don't know anybody, they don't know how the people are, and then they need that someone else uh, in, uh, initiate the conversation or, or be like um, available to help in some cases. Number five, if the person accepts your help to move from one place to another place, always offer your arm. It is the best way to, to help them to go like uh, to cross the street or to go to one place to another place because sometimes you want to push them or just to take by their hand and there is incorrect they have to to put your their, their hand in, in the body of the other person in their arm and then in that for, for that way they can uh, feel the movements and perform the same actions as you no? and then it's better for them to move Number six, to guide them to a seat, you have to take their hand and place it on the black rest of the chair or the armrest or of sofa and let they to be able to sit down by they self, they, they themselves. You don't have to like to take them and to sit down because they're not shy, no? Mm -hmm. And number seven, when nothing in a common staircase, place their hand on the hand rail if it is an escalator, if for them, whether if it is going or down, then place their hand on the moving handrail. But it is, it is uh, uh, a safe uh, a safe way to, to help them. Mm -hmm. Number eight, if a blind person asks for directions, provide them with precise guidance to be covered whether they should turn left, to right, go ahead, and avoid bad expressions like there, over, near, it's better to say to your right, to your left, behind you, in front of you, because it's, there are uh, more uh, it's, uh, directly uh, in the, like, the indications. Mm -hmm. Number nine, never leave them standing without knowing the location. Guide them to a wall, to a table, or furniture where they can feel safe. And number 10, if it's also important to explain their surroundings in the places where they can go if they need to move. Remember to approach them with respect, without fear, and make yourself available in all moments. Yes. Okay, that is very interesting. That is great. So thank you, thank you very much. That was amazing. Yeah, I mean, okay. um, in my case, uh, just as I graduated from from the university, I started learning sign language, which is of course totally different. Uh, but the thing is that it is like the opposite because you know, like uh, mute people, they are yeah. able to see. Uh, and I remember that the teacher will tell us he was he was mute, and he used to tell us that um, you know, we we didn't really have to be afraid of like pointing at things and, and like, you know, directing him through his eyes. Like sometimes he was going to be able to see things and to understand things through his eyes. Um, because at the beginning, of course, we struggled a lot um, to learn like the, the signs and everything. I, in my case, I had forgotten many of them. I only remember my sign because my sign was, was, was this thing. Uh, because I, 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 I have always really like had the beard. So he told me that this was going to be my sign. Um, so the thing is that it's the contrary. And I think that many of us make the same mistake. Um, I have only been able to help one blind person in my whole life. Uh, but I remember that I did, as you said, you know, I offered him my arm and I took him, it was only like two blocks away where he, where he was trying to get. Um, so I remember that I took him and uh, I have always been talkative. So I tried to start a conversation with him, like talking about where he was going and what he was going to do there because he was going to um, to a beauty salon. And the thing is that his family was there waiting for him because they had like a party coming. Uh, and he simply just wanted to go for a walk. And But but he got lost because he was not from here, from El Transito. So yeah, um, the thing is that I feel it's great. And I also feel like, you know, society now, it's it's starting to be more available or more understanding of people who have these uh, like special situations because um, I forgot Bodo, 
Podo, ¿Cómo es que se llaman los, los, los pasos que hay como en los parques? Ay, ay, no, ya, 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 Ajá, pero Podo no sé qué, pero like they're, they're more available, like they're, you know, like more over the place. And I feel like that is great because, I mean, we sometimes um, make the mistake of not trying to include everyone in, in society. And uh, it's very interesting. As you said, you have a lot of experience by uh, what you share because, I mean, because of your husband. Uh, but it's very interesting that um, I never thought of that, actually, to describe the place, to like tell them like you're here, but there are like these sort of things around you in case you want to move. So, yeah, that's that's very, very cool. So, yeah, yeah. thank you very much. And it was very educating as well. So, okay. Okay, great. Now, um. Only one thing in the case of Leslie, I it, it stuck in my mind and I'm sorry I had to mention it. Um, just, there was only one word that I heard that you mispronounced and it was the word enhance. Um, because yeah, la, la palabra mejorar. So that's the only one. It's the only one that I was able to catch. Um, so yeah, it's the word enhance. But apart from that, you guys did amazing. Thank you very much. Very interesting information. So now we're going to get right into... Um, right into the topic for tonight, and we have a fight because, yeah, the first thing that we're gonna do is see this fight between the present perfect and simple past. So, yesterday I told you there is a huge difference when it comes to talking about situations that take place in the present perfect or something that has to do with present perfect. For example, in uh, in case of you being able to visit a place or if you guys have ever been to a place you will have to mention it or like the best recommendation will be to mention it in the present perfect because with present perfect you simply state that you have already done that for example you can say um i have been to um guatemala and that is something that has happened in my case so uh i have eaten more than six pupusas when I'm really hungry. That is something that I have done. But when you say it like that, there is no need for you to remember exactly when that happened. However, when you use the simple past, there is not necessarily an obligation, but more of like a need for you to mention a time frame, for you to mention at least a vague time when you did that activity. So uh, a simple past sentence will sound something like, I remember last year I had um, seven pupusas, for example, but I have to mention it was something that happened last year because in the simple past, you need to state a little bit of the time for you to make clear the idea that it's something that has to do with the past. Person perfect has to do with the past, but it has to do with the past with something that at this moment you have already finished or you have already done. So that is you know, the, the main difference that exists between those two. Now, the examples that we have here are the trainer has saved all the um the paintings. So the trainer has saved all the paintings. In the case of the example that we have for simple past, it would be something like after a day at the mall, the woman went out to her car but couldn't find her keys. And I started, sorry, but couldn't, 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 uh, but couldn't find her keys. After a day at the mall, the woman went out to her car, but couldn't find her keys. So here, the time frame is going to be after a day at the mall. Now, here we have, I started teaching her, paint, her to paint last year. I started teaching her to paint last year. So simple pass is almost always, because it's not, it's not all the time, but it's almost always going to include a time frame for the explanation for the activities that you're describing. So once again, the difference here, or the main difference is of course going to be that you need to use the verb has or have when you are using the present perfect. And of course, the past participle form of the verb. So that is like the trickiest part that has to do with, um, with talking about the present perfect that you need to remember to include the have or has and then the present participle, the past participle of the verbs. Uh, and mostly, of course, when we're talking about irregular verbs, that's when this becomes a way trickier topic. Now, I would like to hear 
uh, the examples that you guys have to offer because I would like to um, to hear examples from you. But before that, uh, if you need uh, help with the verb, if you don't remember how to state the verb in the past participle form, I will be more than welcome, more than willing, sorry, to help you with uh, with that. But now, let's see. In terms of examples here, we're going to do uh, present perfect first because past simple past, I think it's it's easier to understand. So we're going to do present perfect. And uh, let's see. Maybe we may start by hearing from, let's see who are here. Um, Gabriela, Gabriela, uh, what you might call it, Gabriela Cortez. Do you think you can create an example or a sentence that is stated in the present perfect tense? Good evening. Evening. Um, I have. Uh -huh. Both. I have bought. Both. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, jacket. Okay. I have bought a jacket. A jacket. Great. I have bought it. I bought a jacket. Uh, okay. So here, once again, it's something that I, I forgot to mention. You can also um, do the contraction with I have. You can say I've, I've bought a jacket. Uh, but of course, the full form is going to be easier to understand. I have bought a jacket. I have bought a jacket. Great. Now, I would like to hear maybe from um, Ms. Garcia. How would you turn this present perfect sentence into a past simple a simple past sentence how do you think it would be the change or what would you change from this sentence to turn it into a simple past sentence gabby garcia i bought a jacket okay I bought a jacket. We're missing one thing. Only one thing. Which is, okay, as I said, the thing that is the difference we hear is going to be the time frame. So we're going to have to say something like, I bought a yes, jacket. Yesterday. Okay, yesterday. I was going to say last week, but yeah, you can say, I bought a jacket yesterday. So as you see, this is the same sentence or the meaning at least at the end is the same. Uh, you said, I have bought a jacket and it means that you have a jacket with you already. Um, and saying I bought a jacket yesterday, it also means that you have a jacket already. Uh, the difference that exists mainly is that when we use the simple past, it's that we're trying to explain a little bit more of this of the, um, the event. Uh, it may continue to another story or to a larger story however saying things in, in present in present perfect is simply just stating that you have done it and that, that's it like you know you don't want to explain anything apart from this you just want to mention the fact that you have done that but there is no need for you to go farther and beyond explaining more about this situation but i would like to get another example of a present perfect uh sentence from luis so can you please help me with creating a present perfect sentence? <clears throat> Good evening. Evening. You need a, you need a sample in, yes. in, in present, perfect. Perfect. present perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been... Mm -hmm. Uh, in Metro Centro. Okay. I have Today. been. Uh, no, it will be something only Metro Centro. Only Metro Centro. Uh -huh. Thank you. I thank have you. been. Okay, you're welcome. No, thank you. Thank you instead. I have been in Metro Centro. See, the okay. thing is that when we talk about present perfect, is that something that is already done? It's it's finished. So if we say today. 
um, it will state that is something that is still happening. So, uh, and however, in the past, in simple past, uh, ahí de, de hecho ya le dejo la, la tarea un poco más sencilla a Ciro porque quería escuchar de parte de Ciro. How would you turn it, Ciro? Um, great. How would you turn this sentence, I have been in Metro Centro, into a simple past sentence? ¿Cómo cree usted que podría hacer una oración, esta oración en, eh, de presente perfecto, en pasado simple? I have, I have been in Metro Centro. Uh, no, it will be something I was. like this. I was in Metro Centro. Sí, y ahí mencionar lo que mencionó Luis. Today. I was in Metro Centro today. today. So, uh -huh. okay. It would be, estuve en Metro Centro hoy. So, I was in Metro Centro today. So, it's the difference. You know, I have been in Metro Centro. You're simply stating that you have been there. Like, it doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter why, but you have been there. I have been in Metro Centro. But I, with I the... just go to the stadium yesterday. Uh, that is, uh -huh. that is, for example, a simple, uh -huh, a simple past sentence. I went to the stadium yesterday. I went to the stadium um, yesterday. So, uh, this is a simple, a simple past sentence. I would like to change. Then, now that you have given me the, the opportunity, I would like to change the rule. And now turn this simple past sentence into a present perfect sentence. And that job will have to be developed maybe by Sandra. So Sandra, how would you turn this simple past sentence into a present perfect sentence? Me? Mm -hmm. Yes, have, yes, yes. I have been to the stadium. Very good. I have been to the stadium. I have been to the stadium. Nice. It is correct to say, uh, to say I have gone to the stadium. Yes. Yes. Is it, I was just about to mention that. I was just about to mention that because uh, here you can state it like this, but you can also use the same verb. I have gone to the stadium because um, the verb is went. Therefore, the, um, the best way of stating this sentence will have to be the past participle form of the verb go. And the past participle form of the verb go is gone. So I've gone to the stadium instead of saying I have been. However, it works. It works because you're simply stating that, you know, you have the bell of this, um, this activity. But it's way better if you use the same verb for both sentences. But I think you guys get the idea. It's relatively easy, right? When to use what of the structures because um the present perfect is simple to state something you have already done like for example somebody's talking about a specific kind of uh, milk let's say and uh, it's a brand new brand of milk and it's delicious and all that and you can say yeah i have already tried it i have already tried it so that is uh already works as a um as a adverb, because it's basically changing the meaning of the verb into explaining that it's something that you have done. And it's like, it's like, I don't need you to like to explain that to me. It's something that I have done before. So you say, I have already tried it. And already is also going to be one of the most common adverbs when it comes to using the present perfect, because almost always you're gonna need to say, I have already you know, done and been and, and, and eaten and visited and uh, dance and all the things that you can do with the present perfect, it's very common to say already when you use this structure. However, in simple past, it will be something, um, as I said, more for like stories, more for telling more details or going in a longer conversation. But present perfect is simply just stating the fact that you did it and not necessarily mentioning an extra of when or why you did that. So yeah, those are like the the the, the differences that exist between these two um, structures. Now, um, do you guys have any questions related to this? 
seems like no, then we move on into the next one, which is one once again, very similar, but it's also a bit, a bit different because here we're going to talk about present perfect and present perfect, but the continuous version. Now, present perfect, we use the present perfect continuous to describe temporary situations and actions that are not yet completed. The present perfect describes permanent situations and recently completed actions. So um, present perfect continuous is going to be something that we use to refer to things that we have started doing at a point in the past, but we are still doing today and we haven't actually completed that situation. So that's um, when we're going to use the present perfect continuous. So it's it's a mix of both because we have the perfect and we also have the continuous here. Now, um, you're going to see that in some cases, <clears throat> you're going to be using um, the past participle form. It's not like all the time you're going to use um, the, the present participle. It's sometimes you're going to use um, the past participle. So that's something to be keeping an eye on because it's important to remember that part. Now, <clears throat> an example of a temporary situation. A dog has been stealing all the attention. A dog has been stealing all the attention. That's something temporary. That's something that has been happening. And it is started, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago. And uh, the rest of the dogs or the rest of the people at the show don't have any attention because there's one dog who is taking all the attention just for him. But that is it's that is just a temporary situation. It's something that, as I, as I said, it started a while ago and hasn't finished, hasn't been finished thus far. So yeah, then uh, we have this other one. This one is the one that includes the um the past participle form, but it's a permanent situation. Now I've always served with my dog. Here, what is going to give us the idea that this is a a continuous thing? What do you think? What is considered to be here the detail? that makes it clear that it's a continuous thing. How would you how would you identify that this is something that is going to still happen in 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 the verb? Uh, uh maybe. Always? Uh -huh. It's going to be here. This adverb. This adverb always adverb of time. It means that the, the dog is still alive and it's something that I have done with the dog before. And it's something that as the dog is still alive, I will continue to do with my dog. Therefore, even though the verb is in past participle and someone may say that because it is in past participle, it's simply present perfect, it will not be present perfect because it includes this adverb over here. And this adverb basically changes what you mentioned, Lorena, which is the verb. Remember, adverbs are always going to be there to change the actual meaning of the verb. Now, how it will turn into a present perfect sentence? Um, for example, if you take away this always, it will be a present perfect sentence. If you said, I've served with my dog, I've served with my dog, that will mean that you have done that. And, but it doesn't explain that you are still supposed to do it or that you still have the chance to do it again. If you say, I've served with my dog, that would simply mean that you have done it. But if you say, I've always served with my dog, it means that you have done it with before and you will continue to do it. Um, for example, yes? No, for me, when we, when we are talking about present perfect continue, we always are going to use ING, like stealing, amazing, but for but, example, um, in the case of things that you like, I don't know, what is your favorite cookie, for example? Or do you like cookies? Yeah, chocolate. Okay, so your favorite cookie will be uh, a specific brand, maybe, that we can mention? <laughs> oh, no. No, because they have two, I don't have any yeah, one special. Okay, so, but the thing is, okay, so here you may say, I've always loved chocolate cookies. So okay. you have loved chocolate cookies before and you still love chocolate cookies. So in the future, you will continue to love um, chocolate cookies. So that is why this adverb 
is the one that changes the whole thing. Saying always, I've always done this. It means that you know you um that you used to do it, and yet you still do it. So yeah, it's it's uh that is like the only difference, the only change here. But I see what you're meaning. I mean, I, I see what you're telling because yeah, normally it will have to be a present um continuous. It will have to be as you said with ing. But um the fact that there are some situations or some things that we started doing before and we will continue to do uh, is what changes, the, sorry, the actual use okay. for this, um, yeah, for this structure. But is it specifically for those moments when we talk about those situations, okay? I'm not going to say that it's all only when you use always because it can also be when you use never, for example. If you say, for example, I've never liked um, horror movies. I've never liked horror movies. That can be a, a present perfect continuous thing because you haven't liked them thus far and you are very possibly not going to like them in the future either. So using, using also never can give you the same result. So it's normally the situation that um, is going to help us, you know, get there. So. The fact that you, um, like, for example, if you use every day, I've every day eaten tortillas in my life, like people who like tortillas a lot. Um, so maybe they can also use that adverb. I have every day eaten tortillas in my life. So it's something that they have done when they were younger, now that they're old or, or like adults, and they will continue to do till the rest of their life because it's something that they like. So it's, as I said, depending on the situation, not necessarily on the other. So, yeah, it's, as, as it says here, it's something that describes a permanent situation, something that is, um, it has been with you before and it will continue to be with you. Now, the next one, this one is easier. Of course, it's going to be not yet completed actions, which is like the most common uh, moment in which we use the present perfect continuous, which is, for example, Maggie has been amazing um visitors by painting for her supper okay maki has been amazing visitors by painting for her supper now um this is something that has been happening or started um uh, before and it's still happening so there you see it's um once again something that um that uh what you call it that is Something that is not completed, something that will still happen after uh, after today, but is something that has been happening until today as well. So that's like the thing. It's like a cut and continue sort of thing. Sí, es como que cortamos, pero también continuamos, ¿verdad? Viviendo la misma situación cuando utilizamos este present perfect continuous. So Maggie has been amazing visitors by painting for her supper. So yeah. Now, if you uh, want to know supper, oh, that's a cute cat. So if you want to know supper <laughs> uh, is um, uh, dinner, basically. So basically, that's what, what it means. When you talk about supper, you're talking about uh, dinner. So yeah. And the last, for recently completed actions. This is one that if you ask me, I do not agree with. Okay. And it, that is, if you ask me, I do not agree. Look how his crashes. I do not agree with the um with the use of uh the present perfect continuous or the fact that they call these a present perfect continuous because in my opinion, situations that have been completed recently will have to be simply present perfect because it's something that is done. The thing is that um some grammars say that um, the fact that these events affect your recent or your actual situations, your momentary situation, is what turns it into a present perfect continuous thing. It's because this is affecting your right now that um, it, is, it is still considered a present perfect continuous. Something like, I've locked my keys in the car. I've locked my keys in the car. This is something that recently happened and it's affecting me right now or for example if you say something like i've gotten my american visa let's say that you just got your visa and you're telling your family i've gotten my american visa that means that this is affecting your moment like 
you didn't have the visa a few minutes ago. Now that you have it, it is affecting you and it will continue to affect you because, or I mean, affect in the case of like, you know, it, it has like an, an effect on your life, but it's not like something negative, not necessarily. But the thing is that um, it's something that is there. It's present. And uh, the idea of present perfect is what makes these situations fall into present perfect continuous because the idea of present perfect is simply talking about something you have already achieved, but something that is not relevant to your moment right now. For example, if you said, um, I have, uh, I have hold it an American visa, that verb hold it means that you, you, you have it, but it's not important. But if you say I have gotten an American visa, it means that it's something that, you know, it, it's going to impact your present. It's going to have an impact on what you're doing right now or on what you can do in the future. So that's why it's kind of tricky. It's it, it depends on the verb and it also depends on, on like the situation that you're describing. So that is the reason why I do not necessarily agree completely with this, but you know, it's 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 uh it's there, and we are supposed to follow the rules. We are supposed to use situations that have been completed recently, and that will have an effect in our life in the future, as um as a present perfect continuous situation. For example, if you say, "I have broken up with my girlfriend," that will be a present perfect continuous. It will be something that is uh it has happened already, but it will continue to affect you know that person's life in the future so you know it's 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 kind of tricky uh but yeah uh it's 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 weird how you use those recently completed or recently um lived situations so uh questions regarding this okay since so like no then uh now just as uh as a as a what you might call it as a completed explanation of the present perfect we have here. Use the present perfect with the passive or with a, a stated verb such as be, love, and have. And this is what I was I was telling you. Normally, what they want us to do is to use the present perfect with verbs that are stated, verbs that do not uh, have like a call to action, verbs that do not imply further action. So that is like the main reason why some um, some verbs are more suitable for present perfect sentences than verbs that are a little bit more active. Verbs that call for an action, that require an action or, or inspire an action, those verbs are normally going to be more um, suitable for present perfect continuous sentences. Now, if uh, we want to make it clear I think that the examples that we give in the future or the examples that we give in a minute, uh, maybe we better follow this example over here. Uh, Maggie has been, um, you know, amazing using the ING form instead of using the um, past participle form. Because for example, here, we have another one that has um, always included, but the thing is that this verb is a stated verb. Therefore, it doesn't have like a further action. It doesn't necessarily imply that, um, you know, this is something that might just continue to happen. So it's, as I said, it depends on the verb, it depends on the action, and it also depends on um, like the repercussions that it may have in your life. Like what are the things that can happen because of this? Now, here I only want to hear Examples of present perfect continuous. I will not be requiring present perfect examples, only present perfect continuous examples. So let's see. Um, Lorena, would you be willing to provide an example of present perfect continuous? <laughs> For me, I really like. Uh, I was. I had. I have been studying my my speech mm -hmm. today. I have been studying my speech today. Or maybe 
starting, once again, as I, <laughs> esa es la parte complicada. Starting es un verbo estático. Entonces, maybe, maybe a better verb will be practicing. Practicing. Mm -hmm. Practicing. I have been practicing my speech today. So this is like a call to action. It's a more active verb. The studying is like more static, more uh, relaxed, more quiet, more um, yeah. still. So yeah, here I have been practicing my speech today. It's more like an active sort of verb. So yeah. All right. Uh, another example. Maybe we can get one from, let me see. Um, Claudia. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, I have been washing my clothes. Watch the lavar. Uh, mm -hmm. Wash my clothes. Okay. I have been washing my clothes. Um, in in este caso, si necesitamos un time frame. Un qué, perdón? Un time frame. Un un tiempo. Una, un espacio de tiempo. Maybe, for example, this afternoon. Mm, this afternoon, yes. Uh -huh. I have been washing my clothes this afternoon. It's like, or, well, here it might be since this afternoon. Since this afternoon. Because, yeah, the thing is that it's supposed to be a continuous thing, you know, like it's still happening. So, okay. yeah. Yes. I have been washing my clothes since this afternoon. So, yeah, great. Good. Good example. Very nice. Thank you. Um, how about Melanie? You think you can have an example for us of a present perfect continuous sentence? It's a mouthful. I have been watching a series all week. All right. I have been watching a series all week. Great. That is a very, very good example. Now, we, hold, we also get this one from Gabby. Uh, it's I've been working in the same office for about four years. Very complete example. Good. Very, very good job. I have been working in the same office for about, because I, I love this section over here, for about four years. Great. All right. Very good. Um, How about Walter? Walter Quintanilla. Do you think you may provide us an example? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, other example, mm -hmm, please. I I have been running all day. All right, I have been running all day, like Forrest Gump. Great, very very good. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great example. Um, how about um, Leslie? Do you mind providing us an example? Um, I've been living in this house all my life. All right. <laughs> I, I've been living in this, or maybe you can say the same, the same house all my life. Very nice. So I've been living in the same house all my life, or uh, is this para hacerlo más dramático, pero eso solo solo en caso, ¿verdad? For my whole life. I don't know why I love to use this word whole. So yeah, I've been living in the same house for my whole life, but the one example that you gave us is still very very nice. I've been living in the same house um all my life. So, great. Very good. And I think we're going to take one more and uh, maybe we can get one from Rosa. Hello there, Rosa. Okay, seems like she might not be around. How about uh, Gaby Cortez? Um, I've been... I... Mm -hmm. Eating... Uh-huh. Salad. Okay, I've been eating salads. 
Mm. Maybe we can say four. For this week. Okay. Uh, yeah, for this week. So I've been eating salads, or maybe I, with the case of this week, maybe we can leave it just like this. I've been eating salads this week. Eating. I've been eating salads this week. So nice. Uh, mm -hmm. A question. But mm -hmm. what happened when the, the someone asked you, how long have you been studying English? You have to answer, I have been studying English for or since I was mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. But in that case, I can use to study. Uh, yes. Yes, even the thing is that... um. Because the question comes from that, uh -huh. and there it's not like you know like a like an active like a super active uh thing because the question is calling for um for said uh, um answer. But the thing is that if we can provide a more active verb, it's better, you know. Because if you see most of these verbs, the only one that is not necessarily active will be living. This is the only verb that is not active from the ones that we have. But the rest of them practicing, watching, watching, um, working, running, eating, all of them are active verbs, are verbs that require a specific action. However, uh, verbs that have to do with uh, more passive things are reserved for the present perfect sentences. But yeah, if, for example, uh, or that example that you present, if somebody asks you, like, um, you know, uh, for how long have you been studying English? You, of course, can reply, I've been studying English for for the last four years or since I was, as you said, since I, watched in, since I was in school or since I was, and then maybe you can state um, your age since I was like 17 years old, 18 years old, um, whichever works best for you. But yeah, okay. in those occasions, of, of course. Um, or for example, uh, with the case of sentences or, or verbs like uh, feelings that have to do with feelings, you can say, I have been loving the same man since I met him back in, I don't know, back in a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> you can also use it like that, but with the proper um, time. But here, the, the situation here was mostly today. The use of today was the reason why it didn't necessarily work to use a study. However, um, Time frames that are different, like when you say uh, for the last month or for the last, um, I don't know, couple of years or things that go farther and beyond and and, and like have a more, um, what you might call it, a more explained um, version of time, then verbs that are not active verbs can have more use in, in this sense. So, yeah. It's it, it's more because of the time. In this case, the the use of a study is is it was better to use practice because of the time frame. So yeah, but okay. So any questions regarding uh the present perfect continuous? I think it, there were no questions before, right? So yeah, we better move on into this. This is basically the last thing that we were going to cover tonight, which is um a topic, a new topic, and it's called in the news or it's in the news. Now, um, I think we're going to leave it for, no, I think we're going we're gonna to talk about a few of them, but we're going to leave a huge part for the next class. The thing is, how would you define each of these news events? In the news, we already know that there is like a lot of drama and uh, news um, presenters, they want to, to call your attention. They want to grab your attention and keep you there with them. So they normally um use words that are like exaggerated sometimes the things are not necessarily like as big as they say but you know they just want to um to make the fact sound more attractive for the audiences so that's why they will use words like the ones that we have here epidemic um famine um hijacking kidnapping natural disaster political crisis rebellion, recession, robbery, or scandal. So those are words that are not like the most common words to use 
um in like everyday life like you know in 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 regular conversations it's like um uh, it is not that you're gonna be saying all the time oh yeah it's a natural disaster it haven't been raining for the last couple of days so normally what we'll what we will say is like oh yeah it's it's very sad you know it has been rained in like in like the last five days but um we will not necessarily call it a natural disaster or maybe when we talk about like the economic situations we say yeah it's 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 tough and it's like prices are going like going up and all that but in the news they will call it a recession or for example um if you say yeah they stole um what they stole a purse from a lady on the street on the news they will call it a robbery so it's like they're trying to be more or make it more attractive now i would like to hear from your perspective how would you describe, how would you define each of these um, situations? We're going to start going from the end to the beginning. So we start with the word scandal. How would you guys describe the word scandal? Or what, like, what is the definition that you will give to the word scandal? Maybe we can get an opinion from um, Ciro. What do you think a scandal is, Ciro? Me, can I say something? Okay. Uh, for me, a scandal is like something to increase uh, a controversy. Okay. So yeah, a scandal, something that comes to uh, increase a controversy or increase a uh, thing is I have this word running on my head since a long time ago and I forgot how to say it. Like gossip? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a scandal normally has to do a lot with gossip. Uh, a polemic, no, but it's not polemic. I will be a conversation polemic in English. But yeah, the thing is that you know one of those things. It's scandal is basically turning um something like that into like a bigger situation, something that it's not going to affect us. But on the news, they call it yeah, it's a scandal. Shakira discovered that Pique was you know seeing someone else, and now it's a huge scandal, and she has like five songs about it so it's it's a it's a scandal so yeah a scandal is basically increasing the reaches of a of a situation um a controversy yeah, yeah. basically yeah a controversy uh-huh a scandal is mm -hmm. making a controversy way bigger than it was supposed to be so yeah how about a robbery how would you describe or how would you define a robbery um luis Okay, seems like Luis was kind of tired today. I, I did you fall asleep, Luis? Okay, well, maybe uh what about we hear from um from Melanie? What do you think a robbery is, Melanie? How would you define a robbery? I don't know how to... all right um well I think then we're gonna leave it pending okay I think we're gonna leave this or uh, the rest of these um news events pending because I would like to see who are the ones who are going to be um willing to do the next practice because yeah on Monday we're gonna have another practice another speech practice so well, I already have uh, Gabriela, Lorena, um, Leslie, and Imelda, who were part of the speeches. So who would like to be the next uh, one on doing a speech? If I have a volunteer, or will I have to pick tonight? Already, seems like there are no volunteers for the Me speeches. Too. Oh, okay. Gabriela, great. Do you want to pick your own topic or would you like to pick one of these two topics? Yes, how to breathe about habits. 
How to break a bad habit? Okay, great. So how to break bad habits? Nice, very nice. Uh, now, who else would like to do the practice or the speech practice for Monday? Already. Then uh, I think I will have to go maybe with Sandra. So Sandra, in your case, would you like to take uh, the other topic here? How to start a business? Or would you like to take your own topic? I take my own topic. Already then. Um, so Sandra and uh, Gabriela Cortez, you are the two ones assigned for Monday. And uh, yeah, so for this week, basically that's it. Um, I feel like it has been, you know, it's great that we got to, to be together again. So hopefully we can continue working and learning and practicing together. Um, thus far, I have to thank you guys once again for the hard work that you're doing. And uh, well, thank you very much for the participation and attention that you have dedicated to this class tonight. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And I also hope I'll see you on Monday. So bye-bye for now and see you Monday. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.